Hey guys, it is Wednesday, May 20th, and it's time for our weekly look at the Pioneer and Modern Metagames. And there have been some very interesting developments in the last week, in both formats really, that uh, bear some uh, examination and maybe some reevaluation of some decks. Uh, so let's take a look at the big picture here. First off, Pioneer, as usual, sees a lot of churn. Uh, it, it's not quite shifting around as fast as standard does but it's getting close um, there have been a couple of new decks in both formats really that have uh, come to the forefront in the last week uh, companion usage in pioneer is stabilizing just under 90 percent occasionally you'll see a tournament with 31 out of 32 decks or companions um, but the rolling average is is locking in somewhere around 87 to 88 percent modern is slowly climbing still it's up over 70 percent now around 72 in that range um, most of that being Lurus, as you'll see from the top tier decks pioneer is mostly yorion uh, it's probably running half of the companions maybe more are yorion uh, and modern seen some old friends come back and some going away and a brand new deck has kind of come to the forefront so let's look at pioneer first off so i mentioned last week that the just guy fire super friends deck was starting to split and the luca variant has come well to the forefront uh, as we saw in modern with bant Snowblade and Bant Snow Control splitting off with Bant Snow Control taking over. Here the Luca variant of the uh, Just Guy Fires lists is the by far dominant one. 26 of the 29 decks listed here were Luca variants. Three of them were uh, typical Just Guy Fires super friends without Luca. The decks play differently, so I think I'm just going to treat them different um, from here on out. Uh... And the plus three over last week, that's where the Fires Super Friends deck was. It was in fourth place last week. The Luca variant, and I think there was only one Luca deck last week, maybe two. And now they're almost all Luca. So really, that's a brand, almost a brand new deck on its own. Boros Burns still hanging around. Uh, in second, Demir Inverter. Almost exclusively Yorion builds. I think there was one without a companion. That's in third. Uh, Boros Heroic still hanging around there in fourth Lotus Breach the only real significant non-companion deck in Pioneer right now is Lotus Breach then Obzon Rally uh, Clone Tribal had a good week uh, there were quite a few of the Garuda Clone Tribal results this week uh, be interesting to see if that is a one-time effect or if that sticks around and then the Niv to Light decks, almost all Yorion in Pioneer. We'll see it's different, actually, in Modern. Uh, those are bringing up the rear of the top tier here. And you can definitely see how Jeskai, Luka, and Burn have separated themselves from the, from the rest on the, the number of results. So the rest, rest of the uh, deck showing up here, the White-Blue Devotion deck... Um, now has a variant with the white-black devotion. We've been seeing that showing up in the leagues. They're posting equal results in the challenges and premier events. And from what I'm hearing, the black variant here is all over the leagues right now. So uh, be watching for that. That deck is definitely on the rise. It'll be interesting to see which of these two builds wins out. Uh, whether Kaya can... Uh, perform better than than Teferi in these lists. Orzov Doom, Hardened Scale, Simic Ramp, all hanging around. Simic Ramp, again, not using a companion. It's one of the few decks left that's doing it. Um, I would still, if, if your opponent doesn't show a companion at the beginning, I would still assume Lotus Breach. Mono White Devotion, Salted Delirium, and there is a new um, VTCLA and somebody else were playing a blue-white in Soul List, uh, focusing on all that glitters. And uh, I can't rem remember the name of the card right now, but the one white uh, aura that has escape and gives a plus one, plus one. That was uh, 
those two cards were featured in the deck. So that was that was an interesting little build here. Um, a handful of other decks hanging around. There was a Mono Blue Tempo deck that, that posted a good result. That was basically the Mono Blue deck that Autumn Burchett uh, won their Pro Tour with. With the addition, I think it had um, Master of Waves in it. So a slightly different card pool, but uh, the same idea for the deck, definitely. Decks that have disappeared. Spirits is gone. Bant Control didn't show up this week. And the darling of the format a few weeks ago, Orzov Auras, no results at all this week. Jund was gone. That was the flavor of the week last week. Uh, those decks have disappeared. It's the We're seeing a lot of one-week hits, one-week wonders, and they're starting to fade off. Uh, be interesting to see if that effect continues or if it's just this churn as people are getting used to how companions work in this format. Uh, so that's Pioneer. Let's take a look at Modern. So a little bit of the same up at the top with Jund and Burn, but I want to bring up this Black Red Prowess deck. I, I called it last week Black Red Aggro because I wasn't really sure what it was doing. It was all over the place. It was all over the Lotus Box event, and it's been showing up a ton in the different uh, posted results from Magic Online. Definitely a deck to watch. Um, the hand disruption seems to be helping out the prowess deck quite a bit, and it is by far the most uh, successful of the Boros mono red, red blue, you know, uh, variants on the prowess shell. Um, you will see occasionally see it listed on Goldfish as Lurus Mardu. Some lists are running wear and tear in the sideboard, and that's triggering a Mardu naming on, on it. Uh, it's really this Black Red Prowess deck. Uh, Tron is here in fourth. Half of these decks are running Gigantha and half are not. Uh, there's some little bit clever builds with Gigantha and Golos in the deck, which I think is a little interesting. I may suggest that to my son, see what he thinks. Uh, Eldrazi Tron right behind. Blue-White Control. Most of these are Yorion. You do see Kahira occasionally as a commander or a companion. Good old Rug Scapeshift. And I'm calling it this because this deck has been around since before Cons of Tarkir. So uh, I'm not going to call it Team or Scapeshift. But this is the Titanless, uh, basically control deck, rug control deck with escape shift combo finish. Uh, sort of Splinter Twin-esque in that it's got a four mana win con. It just can't do it on turn four. It's got to wait a little later to get its uh, enough lands in play to, to beat you. But uh, yeah, that deck's back. Have not seen that deck do well in years. Spencer, you'd be happy with this one. Uh, Boros Blitz coming up next. Um... This is really Boros Prowess. Uh, the Blitz Namaker is, is an artifact in my spreadsheet, but it's it's a Prowess shell. There's no Kiln Fiend in the deck, but it, it's Prowess creatures. Uh, the next level here, Gruel Monsters. Uh, falling a little bit here, not doing quite as well. Same with Amulet Titan. They're still around. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder if some of the Amulet Titan players have shifted over to Rug Scape Shift. Um, same general idea going on there. The Devoted Devastation deck still hanging around. Uh, five Color Niv had a good had a good week on the back of Gigantha companion builds as opposed to uh, Yorion ones. Uh, the big difference there is the Gigantha builds. You lose the Unconditional Sweepers. Uh, all the modern legal Sweeper effects like uh, Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, etc. all have double white mana symbols, so you can't play them with Gigantha. So they're playing uh, Deafening Clarion or... I um, can't recall the name, but the one where each creature does its power damage to itself. That doesn't help with some of the prowess creatures. 
So it was interesting to see the Gigantha builds doing well in Modern as at the same time as Prowess. Bottles is hanging around. Lurus has really made that deck do well. And uh, it looks to be pretty well positioned. Sultai Reclamation back. This is the uh, Nexus of Fate deck. Ad nauseum. Uh, Grixis Control doing some things here. Sprite Dragon is helping that deck out quite a bit. It's a better threat, better clock than many of the things that Grixis Control has had. And then Euroza and Bant Snow Control bringing up the rear here. And then there are a whole bunch of other decks. We saw 38 different decks this week. It's a little low for Modern, but I, there were... Uh, a little bit fewer events. I think one or two fewer events posted this week than normal. Uh, things I want to highlight here are this Boros Hammer deck. Tom Ross has been playing this. I've commented on it, and, and I just love the idea. I think it's hilarious to put a Colossus Hammer on Ink, Ink Moth Nexus. But Tom is calling it Boros Infect. So that gives you an idea of the way the deck plays. Um, let's see, other things. Humans is hanging around uh, half and half whether they're playing Gigantha or not. Storm, both the builds that posted results this week were running Gigantha. Uh, it's basically a freebie in the deck. There are no double mana symbols in the Storm deck. Uh, the Merfolk deck that showed up was a blue-white version with Unsettled Mariner, the honorary Merfolk, the shapeshifter. The Naya Stoneblade deck that showed up is using the Umbral Mantle combo uh, with Zerda to get uh, infinitely large Birds of Paradise. If you end up facing this deck, bolt the bird. Don't <laughs> That bird will kill you. Um, I want to try this deck. It looks hilarious. Uh, so, we'll, and, you know, Stoneforge Mystic, Mystic can go get your Umbral Mantle. So we'll see where that goes. Decks that did not appear at all this week that we've been seeing lately were the Demir Were Demir Control decks. Didn't see those. Grixis Death Shadow? Nope. We did see, I think, four Color Shadow or Jun Shadow. Those showed up, but not Grixis. Infect? Nothing. Kiki Cord and Living End? Those, those didn't make any appearances either. Uh, so, frankly, quite a bit of change at the top for Modern. We're not used to seeing a deck sort of show up out of nowhere here like this in Modern. It usually takes a while. This took about a week. It'll be interesting to see how this hangs around. So that's about it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, look at where the metagames are. And uh, we will be back hopefully tomorrow if work doesn't get in my way like it did yesterday. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know when the next videos are coming out. And that's about it for now. Stay safe out there, have fun, and have good games. Bye-bye.